Hello everyone, welcome to this first in a series of deep dives into using PseudoWrite's features. PseudoWrite is, in my opinion, the best tool out there for writing fiction right now. With the AI world being what it is, that could change at a moment's notice. But right now it is an absolutely amazing tool and we're gonna be using it today and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take several videos and go deep on a specific portion of this tool and everything you need to know about that portion before we move on to the next. So you can actually consider this to be basically a mini course of videos about how to use PseudoWrite from top to bottom, starting with this video. And so to, for today, we're gonna to come into PseudoWrite. And uh, actually, when you first come into PseudoWrite, you'll see this, you'll see a car, uh, cards of all of your different projects. I'm gonna come here to Fall of the Fairy. And then we're gonna come here on the left to Story Engine. Story Engine is, I believe, where the most value for PseudoWrite lies. Um, this is where you can actually generate the prose for your novel. And there are a lot of other things that PseudoWrite can do, but in my opinion, this is the most important one. So uh, today we're gonna to be focusing just on this brain dump section. Now, you you might not think, well, it's just, it's brain dump, right? You just put whatever into there and then you're done. Not necessarily. There are ways that you can really optimize this space to be the best that it can be for the future. So let's actually learn a bit about brain dump and what it is. Um, if you hover over this little question mark, it'll show you how it works. Brain Dump is a completely free form box. You can put uh, everything you know about your story info, a stream of consciousness, ramble, a treatment, or even just one word. This section affects synopsis and beats. Now this is important to know what areas are affected by each box that we see here in Story Engine. Uh, and this one, as it says, affects synopsis and beats. Now beats are what you get to way over here when you're writing your first chapter. Th these are the beats here. Uh, when you're generating these beats, uh, if you hover over this, you can say it's generated based on brain dump, genre, style, synopsis, character, and outlines. So basically the beats looks at everything. And so with that in mind, I'd say we don't have to worry too much about how the brain dump is going to affect the beats here because the beats is really gathering data from everything. And so I don't worry about that. But we do learn that it also affects the synopsis, which is right here. And this is where it, it is most important to make sure you have the right information for the synopsis to do something. Now, it does say that with brain dump, you can just put one word into that and be fine. And then it'll generate the synopsis from that one word. And that's true. If we were to just say here, Harold, and then hit generate, it'll give us, here, I'm gonna cancel it because I don't want it to use all my words. It'll give something totally original. Um, I didn't give anything except the word Harold, but here we have a main character named Harold, okay? So it's given this, um, thing, but generally speaking, we're not going to be starting that much from scratch, right? So I'm just going to delete that. And we're going to be giving this a lot more information. Now, since this affects the synopsis, we want to look at what we want the synopsis to look like. So here it actually gives us a little bit of information. If we zoom in here just a little bit, Introduce the characters, their goals, and the central conflict while conveying the story's tone, themes, and unique elements. So if this is what the synopsis does, then we want to make sure that all of the information that is needed for the synopsis can be put into this brain dump here. So um, I happen to have some information for this particular novel. This novel is going to be called Fall of the Fairy. It's the fifth book in my Fairy Queen series. And so we're going to just start typing in some of the information here. Um, this is the fifth book in the Fairy Queen series. So that's giving it a little bit of context. An Arthurian fairy tale. Up till this point, the heroes have been battling the seven deadly sins in the last book. The seven deadly sins managed to free one of their masters. 
Kernonos into the world. Things are not looking very good right now. So this is just a little bit of context because we are writing a sequel and that we're not writing the first book in the series. It's important to give it a little bit of that context so it knows where it's coming from. Uh, that's where I would start with this brain dump. And then we're just going to give it plot information. Now, I happen to have a lot of this already written out already. Um, and so we're, I'm just going to give this here just as is. I've got a big old list of plot points that go through the entire book as I've already outlined it. You might not have all of this plot information, but I would then I would put in the character the plot information that you do have in there as well. Keep in mind that when it is generating the synopsis, it can fill in some of those gaps for you. Um, but I will say it's I would at least try to make sure you know where the book is ending. Because if you put the ending in there, that will help the synopsis considerably. And the reason for that is this synopsis, when it's generating it, tends to be a little bit generic. And with a lot of synopsises, synopses, synopsi, um, you, when you're generating it with AI, it will often leave off the ending. Right, because it's writing it more as a book description, like a thing enticing you to read the book. But you actually don't want that. You want a full description of the entire plot of the book to be in this synopsis. So, and that includes the ending. So I would make sure for sure that you have the ending listed somewhere in this brain dump. Uh, and if you need help with that, go to ChatGPT and brainstorm a bunch of different endings, but make sure the ending is in here for sure. Uh, then it's time to add some characters. Um, so we can say characters and then just do a little dash here and say, okay, Una. Una is a strong and engaging protagonist. She has magical gifts to imitate the magic of others, making her extremely powerful, yada, yada, yada. And I could continue on. In fact, I will right now. All right, now I have three other characters listed in here. These are the three most important characters for this particular book. I could write a few more, uh, but for the purposes of this, I'm not going to because we can do we can flesh that out a little bit more in the character section, uh, which we will get to later. But right now we've got a little bit of context, which I think is important, a little bit of the plot. And as I said, make sure you have at least the ending of the plot I'd say the initial concept and the ending should be in here because that will help the synopsis to know uh, what it does. And then if we go here, look at stories, tone, themes, and unique elements. Um, there aren't really any particular unique elements I feel like I have to add that aren't already mentioned here in the plot, but you might want to make sure that it does have that. I did put a little bit of the goals of these characters in there, so that's important. I will say the tone is urgent and um, stressful. A lot of characters are worried that they are about to lose the battle for Earth. Something like that. Um, give it a little bit of information on that tone. And you could add more information about the theme. Uh, world building could be important. For this particular book, it's not very important, but I will add a note here. This is an Arthurian story. It takes place in 500, in roughly 500 AD, or we can say CE depending on what you feel there. Um, and then I'll give it a little bit of context about the nature of the world right now. Um, it takes place in Britain during the Saxon invasion. The Romans are no longer in England, or I'll say Britain leaving the Britons to 
fend for themselves. This is also a time before King Arthur. At this point in time, King Arthur is has the sword he pulled from the stone, but he doesn't want to be king and no one knows where he is. And so that's important just because I've said this is an Arthurian story and so it's naturally probably going to want to draw in King Arthur as a main focus of the story. So I just want to give a little context about who he is and, and what he's doing at this particular time. So this is another good place to kind of give information about the timeline and the world building and the set. Like I've given some information about the setting here. You could continue to do this even further. I think this is probably good enough because really the most of the magic that you're going to do is going to be done later down the line once you have created this synopsis here and once you've created your characters and you start to get into the outline then it's going to become more important for everything that you do that you make sure you have the right context that the story is flowing correctly and all of that so i hope that was interesting and useful to you i will see you in the next video and next week we should have another video where i will continue to walk you through step by step on how to use this incredible tool. And I'll see you then.